live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. I'm going to give you a hypothetical scenario. You're a football fan, and you're in charge of the remote on a weekend in the middle of November. You've got one TV, and you've got to pick between two games to watch. And no, you cannot flip back and forth. Whatever decision you make is final all the way through. You're also not a fan of either one of these teams, so you're a completely neutral party who just wants to watch the best game possible. Option one is to pick a game featuring two undefeated teams out of the SEC. These are two teams that, as things stand, will win the title if they win out, and pretty much control their own destiny. It's the first time in nearly a quarter century that two undefeated teams in the SEC are meeting this late in the regular season. And on paper, for both of these schools, it's one of the biggest regular season games in program history. Option two is to pick a game featuring a ranked team that has no shot at winning the national championship and a team that has a losing record and has played some pretty garbage football. What game are you picking? Of course, you're picking the first option. You're picking the undefeated battle that has national championship implications over the game featuring a ranked team and an unranked team with a losing record. You would be crazy not to. However, back in 1998, CBS affiliates all throughout the country had this dilemma. Minus the places where you had a local home team playing in that game, and where you kind of had to pick the other game based on the territory you were in, every single affiliate chose the undefeated battle. That is every single affiliate except for one. Because down in Hawaii, leaving the mainland, the CBS affiliate, KGMB, chose the other game. Rather, I shouldn't say chose so much as forced against their will despite their best efforts. And the aftermath from this, and the feud between the station and the network, was absolutely ugly, especially since one game was clearly better than the other, both on paper and on the field. This is the story behind the bizarre broadcasting controversy from the 1998 college football season involving CBS and the entire state of Hawaii. Before I talk about the actual controversy in question, we need some context to understand the two games at hand that CBS affiliates across the country were scheduled to get at 3.30 Eastern, or I guess in Hawaii, 10.30 in the morning. It's November 14th, 1998 and there is one game that everyone is talking about as the biggest game of the entire season. Because over in Rocky Top at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, we have a big battle in the SEC between the Tennessee Volunteers and the Arkansas Razorbacks. The importance of this game cannot be overstated. Tennessee entered this game as the number one team in the country, coming in with a perfect 8-0 record. Even after losing their star quarterback from last year, Peyton Manning, they show no signs of slowing down with T. Martin under center and beat three ranked opponents entering this one. As for Arkansas, after two straight seasons with a 4-7 record, they weren't expected to do a whole lot under their new head coach, Houston Nutt. They were unranked to start the season off, and weren't even ranked until October. However, they entered this game against the Volunteers with an 8-0 record, and even though they were number 10 in the rankings, if they went on the road and won this game, and ran the table and won the SEC with an undefeated record, they would clearly be playing for the title. There was so much riding on the line, and when you've got two undefeated teams in the SEC playing each other in the middle of November, it's going to be big, and it's going to receive a ton of national attention. However, it's not as though every CBS affiliate across the country was going to be receiving that game. Despite the big nature of it, there was another game that CBS affiliates could have gone with in that 3.30 Eastern time slot. If they didn't want to go with the Tennessee-Arkansas game, they could have gone with the Notre Dame-Navy game, of which there are no highlights for and there is no available footage for, so I'm just going to leave it on the Arkansas-Tennessee game that was the clear marquee matchup. And of the two options, let's just say that this was, quite easily, the worst one. It's like asking someone if they'd rather have a fresh slice of pizza or a cold slice of pizza that's been sitting on the floor for the last three hours. One of them is clearly better than the other. Notre Dame was a very good team. They entered the game as the number 12 team in the country, and entered with a 7-1 record. However, unlike Arkansas and Tennessee, 
They had no shot whatsoever at competing for the national championship. Their loss to an unranked Michigan State team earlier in the season ended all hope for them in that department. And their opponent for this game was the Navy Midshipmen, who were a very, very bad team. Navy entered this game with a 3-5 record, with one of their wins being against a Division I AA opponent in Colgate, and another win being against Kent State, a team that finished the season with a record of 0-11. And, and this isn't even taking into account the fact that Notre Dame, historically speaking, dominated Navy. Navy hadn't beaten Notre Dame since 1963, 35 years ago. In their last 13 meetings of this annual rivalry, 12 of them were decided by more than one possession. In other words, everyone knew Notre Dame was going to win this game, and probably win it by a lot, to the point where it won't really be competitive. So when it came time for each CBS affiliate to pick a game for the 3.30 window that day, and they had to choose between the Arkansas-Tennessee game that you've been watching this whole time, or the Notre Dame-Navy game, every affiliate picked the Arkansas-Tennessee game for incredibly obvious reasons. Unless you were near Annapolis, where Navy was located, or near South Bend, where Notre Dame was located, and unless you were in the market of either Navy or Notre Dame, you were getting the Razorbacks against the Volunteers. And you'd think that this would also be true for the CBS affiliate right here, KGMB. This is Channel 9, and this is the CBS affiliate that serves all of Hawaii. This is the CBS affiliate that serves the over 460,000 people in the Honolulu market, which is right near the top 30% of all TV markets in the United States. Seems incredibly obvious that judging by the importance of the Arkansas-Tennessee game, that they would get that game, especially since Hawaii is not in the mainland, or is anywhere near the mainland for that matter so there's absolutely no close markets to worry about, and no competing school in close proximity. And KGMB was, for obvious reasons, pushing hard to get that Arkansas-Tennessee game, and to get the much more attractive matchup. However, in a bizarre twist that led to the controversy at hand, CBS stepped in and forced KGMB's hand. And CBS was going to force the Notre Dame Navy game on them. Despite the fact that it's over 4,300 miles from Honolulu to South Bend, and over 4,800 miles from Honolulu to Annapolis, Honolulu was, against their will, going to be getting this Notre Dame Navy game, making them, for all intents and purposes, the only TV market not close to either Navy or Notre Dame to be getting this game over the much better game. And KGMB was really, really upset about this. They tried everything in their power to get CBS to change its mind, and to force its hand to show the much more important and attractive game between Tennessee and Arkansas. But it didn't work. Before we get into what KGMB requested to do, we first have to ask the all-important question. Why did CBS force Honolulu, of all places, to show this game? Well, as you might be able to guess, CBS had a contractual obligation with the Naval Academy. And for any game that CBS was broadcasting that involved Navy in any capacity, in any market where there was a naval base, CBS had to show the Navy game. Navy was the de facto home team anywhere where there was a naval base. And seeing as Hawaii is the home to Pearl Harbor, this meant that, per that contract, Hawaii would get the Navy Notre Dame game. Complicating the matter, and this is definitely an argument that KGMB general manager Ray Deppa made, was the fact that there was only one CBS affiliate serving all of Hawaii. So this decision impacted not just those near the naval base, but those across the entire state who were nowhere close to it. In other words, if you made a decision for Honolulu, it was also impacting the people in one of the most populous towns in Hawaii, Hilo, over 210 miles away on the Big Island. If you were one of the 2,000 or so people who lived near the south of the Big Island in the town of Bahala, also over 210 miles away from Honolulu, you were impacted by this. For some perspective, the distance between those two cities is about the same as the distance between Rutgers University and Washington, D.C. Imagine if you were in D.C. and you were contractually obligated to show Rutgers football games, no matter how bad they were and no matter how good the other games on the schedule were. Well, that's kind of what this was like with CBS's deal with Navy just to put into perspective how absurd that is. And making this deal even stupider is the fact that this was a three-year contract with Navy dating back to 1996. And yet, 
This was literally the only time that this applied. In 1996, they played on CBS twice. One time, it was at 8 a.m. against Notre Dame over in Ireland, where that was the only game in that time slot. So everyone was showing that game regardless. And in 1996 and 1997, they played on CBS in their iconic rivalry game against Army, which once again was the only game in that time slot, as Army-Navy always closes off the season. So it's not like this was a well-known contract that everyone knew about. Navy wasn't even the local team in that regard, because Hawaii never got a Navy game that 100% of the rest of the country wasn't also already getting. And to say that KGMB was furious about this would be an understatement. They tried everything in their power to not have to show this Notre Dame Navy game, but every attempt failed. They tried requesting the Arkansas-Tennessee game. That didn't work. They tried asking to show the Navy game on tape delay after Arkansas-Tennessee. That didn't work either. Everything under the sun that you can think of, KGMB tried to plead with CBS. And everything under the sun that was attempted got rejected. KGMB's hands were completely and utterly tied. As General Manager Ray Deppa said on the matter, after what happened last week with Ohio State losing, the Tennessee-Arkansas game took on national implications. So we requested to televise that game instead of the Notre Dame Navy game. We tried our best to make the change, because we endeavored to select the best possible matchups, and our network has been very understanding and cooperative. However, in this instance, we are disappointed that our viewers will be unable to see the Tennessee-Arkansas game, a battle of undefeated teams. The Tennessee-Arkansas game took on more importance. Sometimes, a decision like this works out, even if it might not seem like it at first. Sometimes, the station gets stuck with a game that turns out to be significantly better than the one they wanted. This, however, was not one of those times. Far from it. In fact, I'm not sure this decision could have gone any worse than it did. The Arkansas-Tennessee game was an all-time classic that Tennessee fans still talk about nearly a quarter century later for how improbable the ending was. With Arkansas leading 24-22, with under two minutes left in the game and the ball, all they had to do was run out the clock, and they win the game. Instead, Arkansas improbably fumbles, Tennessee recovers, and they drive down the field to win a 28-24 in the final 30 seconds, keeping their undefeated season alive under some of the unlikeliest of circumstances. And the Notre Dame-Navy game? Well, Notre Dame won that one 30 to nothing. Whoops. Really glad Hawaii was forced to show that Navy game that no one cared about because of some contract that no one knew about and that never had a chance to be enforced until this very moment. Even though Hawaii is not on the mainland and can sometimes feel isolated from the rest of the country, there are times when it comes to college football where they are the center of attention. The Aloha Bowl, the games that start at midnight on the East Coast where they're the only game on TV, the Colt Brennan years where they somehow made it to the Sugar Bowl and had a very explosive offense, and this bizarre broadcasting controversy. Because back in 1998, the viewers of Hawaii, as well as the people working at the CBS station in Hawaii, were hoping to say aloha to the Navy Notre Dame game and say aloha to the Tennessee Arkansas game. Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.